Hey tea heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, getting geeky with teaware. In this video, I'm gonna be unleashing my true inner geek when it comes to teaware, and we're gonna be talking about the thinking behind our newest porcelain tea set. This video is gonna go under the teawares playlist. If at any point in time you enjoy this video, then make sure you hit it with a thumbs up. The more thumbs in the air, the more tea videos are gonna come your way. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, go click that button. Some of you may recall in May this year, we were in Dehua. Dehua is one of the porcelain capitals of China along with Jingdezhen. We were in Dehua searching for Mayleaf porcelain and I did a very short video. You may recall it, I'll put a link in the description below. And finally, many, many months later, so I'm talking to you from December now, finally some of the porcelain has arrived. There's some more porcelain on its way, but this is our um, signature Gaiwan tea set and I wanted to talk to you about the thinking behind this tea set. So let's begin with the Gaiwan. So this is all porcelain and it's all uh, sky blue color, really nice kind of celadon blue green color, very very nice, all with brown edging. I'll show you that quickly so you can see the brown edging and they are all Mayleaf branded as you can see but it's very subtle. So it's just on the base. So let's talk about this guy one. So first of all, what you may notice, those of you who um, have followed our um, journey with teaware and you may have picked up our other sky blue guy one, is this is slightly bigger. This is a 150 mil guy one. And I know a lot of people out there um, might be thinking, ah, 150 guy one, mil guy one, is that a bit too big? I have really kind of played around with guy ones and sizes. And what I've noticed is, that 100 mil guy ones are great. 70 to 100 mil guy ones are great for solo brewing and great for like one, maybe two people. And we have some white um, 100 mil guy ones on their way, they are coming. But in terms of a size that suits both solo brewing and also brewing in groups, I think 150 mil is the right size. And if you are brewing by yourself, you don't have to put, um, you don't have to fill the guy one up to the top so you can put a little bit less leaf and don't have to fill to the top and you can still have a really good session by yourself with this 150 mil guy one but this really comes into its own when you have one or two people or three people coming over and you want to do a tea session those 100 120 mil guy ones just do not cut it this is the right size in my opinion for a more social guy one uh, option and you can still use it for solo brewing. So that's the first thing, size. Shape, classic guy one shape, good pour, very, very nice, we'll, we'll see that later. The other feature of this guy one is the hole in the saucer. And this has a couple of purposes, let me just show you. So I first picked up a guy one with a hole in, in the saucer uh, many, many, many years ago, and I use it a lot, a lot, a lot. And the reason for that, well, there's a couple of reasons. The first is it really locks the guy one into place. So it's really, really nice. It locks the guy one into place. So when it's um, when it's on uh, a table, it doesn't slip off. It doesn't slip around. So it's really, really nice. It locks that into place. The second advantage of having the hole in the saucer is that inevitably, whenever you're doing your uh, tea sessions. Um, you will be pouring uh, excess uh, liquid out. So when you're pouring the water in, you're gonna be pouring, tipping out any excess liquid. And if the saucer doesn't have a hole, that builds up in the saucer. It's not a big deal, but it's kind of an extra thing to do is always have to empty your saucer. This way, the majority of the liquid, not all of it, but the majority of the liquid will drain out into your tea tray, uh, tea boat, Gongfu Guru if you happen to have one. So that's the other advantage of having a hole in the saucer. So we've talked about the size, we've talked about the hole in the saucer. Um, I think that we should start brewing. So what I've got here is some Tie Guan Yin. This is our autumn batch of Tie Guan Yin. And I, am, I have to say guys, I'm not gonna do a video on this, but you, if you like Tie Guan Yin, you need to pick up 
this autumn batch. It's super fragrant, really, really, really fragrant. So in Tie Guan Yin, as a brief aside, one of the things that they say about Tie Guan Yin, and I think it's, it's true, is that spring tea is really powerful in flavor, um, and autumn tea is more powerful than spring in terms of fragrance. So you've got this balance that you have with autumn and spring, and this is very, very fragrant. So we're gonna heat this up. So this is porcelain, and it's the right thickness as well. This is something that we really wanted to make sure we, we, we did. We, if it's too thin, the porcelain, then there's more chance that you're gonna uh, burn yourself because the um, water is obviously gonna heat up thin tea wear very, very quickly. If it's too um, thick, then it takes a lot of water in order to bring the tea wear up to temperature. So working on the thickness of the porcelain is important. With I think this is, this is really spot on. It's very, very easy to hold, very, very, um, it really doesn't get hot too much around the, the, the fingers and um, it doesn't require too much water to heat it up. So we're gonna throw these leaves in and give this a sniff. As I said, the fragrance on this is amazing. Oh, I'm not gonna talk about the tea, I promise you um, that I'm not gonna get too involved in the tea. Wow, super fragrant, very, very balanced. Lots of flowers, lots of honeysuckle. Very creamy as well, got that yolky, creamy note to it as well. But as I said, not gonna to talk too much about the tea, let's focus on the tea wear itself. All right, so that's the guy one. And stick around because I'm gonna show you some different ways to pour with the guy one. So we're gonna go next level on guy one pouring at the end of this video. So obviously there needs to be a matching Gong Da Bei. Unless you're going to be brewing Chao Zhou style, which is when you pour directly from the guy one into several cups, um, which is one style of brewing, but the majority of Gong Fu brewing goes into the Gong Da Bei. Oh, I forgot to say, notice how the lid fits perfectly in the saucer to the millimeter. The edge of this saucer matches perfectly with this uh, lid, so you can, you can just spin this around like a wheel. It's really, really perfect. Let me, I'll try and bring that closer so you can see it. But we will be getting some close-ups as well, so you can see close-ups of all of this. So that's another thing. You don't want uh, the lid to either hang off or to push the guy one away. Um, that hole in the saucer helps that as well, locks it into place. So that's a really, really nice um, balance that it has to it. So the Gong Dao Bei. Gong Dao Bei really is simple fairness cup for those of you who don't know. So you're pouring the brew into this and then serving from this. That way, all of the uh, cups that you serve will be getting the same uh, strength of brew. If you pour it directly from a pot or a guy one, you're gonna be getting different strengths. So this is the fairness cup that suits this guy one. It fits the um, Chinese uh, strainers, the fine Chinese strainers perfectly, as you can see. Um, and we made sure that it fit the larger size one so that you know that it's, it's, if you've got a slightly smaller one, it will definitely fit, but the larger size one for sure fits. So that's really, really nice. Um, let's brew this tea up. Let's first of all give it a rinse. So I didn't put as much leaf as I would have put if I was brewing right to the top, just to show you how easy it is to brew solo style if you get this guy one. Again, the temptation to talk about the tea is very great, but I'm not gonna do that. Um, so, the uh, guy one spout is quite short, you'll notice. And one of the things that we were always concerned about with short spouts is whether or not it's gonna have a drip-free pour. Because many, many uh, spouts, when you see that it's short like this, unless the shape of the spout is right, you're gonna get drips. Now we're gonna get close-ups of this, but I'm gonna show you that spout cuts the stream. You may get one occasional drip just going down the Gondave, but in essence, 
for that short spout, which I think is very, very elegant in, and, and uh, simple in its design, in its silhouette, I think that that pour is spot on, in my opinion. Especially if you fill this guy one up and you put it um, into the Gong Dao Bay, it will only reach about two thirds up. You'll, you, you'll find that if you overfill this guy one, say you're using a bigger pot, I'm uh, sorry, this Gong Dao Bay, if you're using a bigger pot and you filled it right to the brim, then you have more likelihood of, of there being some drips. Let's try it. I'll just fill this up so we can see. Right, so this is right up to the top. So that would be um, 200 mil. Let's take a look. Yeah, you get one drip, but still. It cuts the stream really, really well, especially for how short that spout is. Okay, so that's the Gong Dao Bay. Again, thick porcelain um, so that it doesn't burn your hands um, and uh, retains the heat as well. Retains the heat um, so that when the tea is sitting there, if you're just serving by yourself, so you, you have one person or um, you're solo and you're not pouring all of the infusion into your cups, this will retain heat relatively well compared to thinner Gong Dao base. Right, let's do our first infusion. Here we go. So I'm not filling to the top, just filling to where the um, Gai Wan starts to curve outwards. For me, that's the right level for a solo brew. And then we're gonna get on to the cups. So I intentionally used a ball rolled oolong here because those are probably the most difficult to brew in a Gai Wan. They expand so much that the water can kind of overflow a little bit and it can lead to kind of burning fingers sometimes. For those of you who have a Gai Wan, you will know what I mean. So, let's now talk about the cup. So the cup here is a tulip shaped cup. And this cup has been designed so that um, it's suitable for solo, brew, uh, solo drinking. So you can fill this up if you wanted. And just uh, if, you're, if you're not having one of those really focused tea tastings and you're just getting on with work or you're, you know, you're watching TV or something and you want your tea with you, you can fill up this tulip teacup right to the brim and you can just drink it so that way you don't have to keep refilling, keep refilling, keep refilling. So it's actually a slightly oversized cup so that you can have that solo brewing. I'm just gonna pour this back. Oh, the color of the liquor. There's another thing here, the contrast of the porcelain here, the lightness of the porcelain allows you to really see the color of the liquor. Anyway, back to the cup. This has really been designed to fill about halfway. When you fill it about halfway, what you're doing is allowing a space of air above the liquor, which is still kind of contained by the cup, that will just kind of hold aroma a little bit more. And we're gonna talk about the shape of the cup in a bit, but first I need to drink. So as you can see, I can stick my nose in, I can really smell the uh, fragrance coming off this Tie Guan Yin, this superior iron goddess. Really, really nice, you get that extra enhancement of the tasting of the tea because you're getting aroma whilst you're drinking. And some people like to drink in wine glasses, in fluted wine glasses, or you've seen us drink in those long glasses, purely because when you're bringing the liquor in, uh, to, your, to your mouth, it's nice to get hit with all of those volatiles in your nose as well. So let's talk about cup shape because this is one of the areas that I'm most obsessed with. And I have a few cups here. Let me first of all brew one more infusion here. Mm. Wow. It's like candy, candy on the tongue. I'm gonna brew one more because we're gonna be showing, I'm gonna be showing you some different cups, uh, shapes and sizes, and talking to you about why we selected this larger tulip shaped cup. As you can see, this guy one has a really nice pour, very, very smooth, very little turbulence on the pour. Right, I'm gonna put that to one side. Right, so 
Let's talk T-shape here. Um, let's put them in a certain order. Let's go like, move you out of the way. Let's do it like this. Okay, so there are two things here that I want you to focus on. The first is the height of the cup. We've talked about this already. The higher the cup, the more aroma the cup is going to trap. And you've seen, you may have seen aroma cups, which is specifically designed just to smell, which are long cylindrical cups, but I don't think you need those. So the height of the cup affects how much flavor, uh, aroma, I should say, you're getting while you're drinking. So you might say, well, Don, why don't you just make cups always really, really high? There's a reason for that, because when the cup is very, very high, you need to really strain your neck to finish it because of the fact that you've got the diameter versus the height. And so if the balance is more in, in favor of the height over the diameter, then you're gonna to have to tilt your neck a fair amount. So there's a balance there between the enjoyment of drinking, how easy it is to drink, versus the amount of aroma that you're getting while you're drinking. The second thing is um, the shape itself, right? So you've got, um, you've got this shape here, which is very, very concave, right? And this shape here is super easy drinking, right? Because it basically, you just tilt, and as soon as it hits over the horizontal, you're getting the liquor, okay? And then you've got this style here, which is the opposite, it's, it's concave, very, very elegant, very, very nice. Some people really like the design of, of this, and I think it's a very nice silhouette, again. But the problem with these kinds of cups is, again, having to tilt, having to tilt a lot. So again, you have a balance that you're, you know, and it depends on you as a drinker. On the one hand, you've got very easy drinking cups like this, that don't hold aroma because it's so wide, the aroma just disappears. Or you've got these concave cups or these straight edged cups, which basically are more difficult for you to drink or they involve a little bit more neck movement, but they do hold the tea aroma better. So let's uh, fill all of these up. One of the advantages of having a taller cup is that you can be a bit more, uh, you can be a little bit less accurate with your pour because you're not going to, you're not going to worry about it flying off the other side. Um, but that's a small thing really. Okay. So beautiful, luminous liquor here. So let's, let me show you visually what I mean by this, uh, more neck movement in your drinking, because you're probably thinking that this is very, very trivial. Um, and for you it might be, but when you drink a lot of tea, these kind of things matter. So, first of all, let's go with, uh, let's go with this one here. So this is gonna be the easiest. I'm gonna turn to one side, so you've got three quarter view, so you can see how much neck movement I'm doing when I'm drinking. I told you this was gonna get geeky, guys, but this is what we do, okay? So, here we go. I didn't have to move my chin at all, right? That was easy. The problem with these kinds of cups, doesn't hold aroma, L very high center of gravity. Those are gonna fall all over the place. I don't like them at all. Right, now we're going for, again, a low cup, so it means less movement, and the shape is, well, I'll show it to you, the shape is more the classic teacup shape, that quite wide shape. It's not gonna hold aroma very well, but it's gonna be an easy drinker. I'll show you, so flat chin. Right, I'm here, there's still a little bit of liquor here. Now I have to be about here, right? Let's take a look at this Ruyao cup. So this is the porcelain cup that we sell. It comes as part of the Gong Fu Guru, but we sell it separately as well. This is our Ruyao porcelain uh, tea cup. And I love this because it really doesn't, it's such an easy drinker, just watch. Easy gone, finished, right? So actually it's easier than this one here in terms of how much neck movement you're doing. Right, let's now move on to our tulip shaped. So with this one, we are, we're balancing here. 
We're giving it height, which is going to capture aroma. We're also giving it that shape where it's slightly moving inwards. You can see it's got straight edges here to again hold aroma, but then we're splaying it out to try and help the, 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 the ease of drinking. Um, and um, that means that hopefully, now I've still got a little bit left, what? I'm here, okay, I'm gonna hold here, that's done. Now watch this one, watch this one here. Not even half consumed. I have to go here. Right here, this is where I have to go to finish the liquor in this. Even then it wasn't finished. And then finally this really tall straight edged sake cup. All the way back, all the way back. It's, it's designed for, for gambe shots, I guess. But there you, that just is a, a visual demonstration of how the shape of the cup affects how easy the tea is to drink. Now, if that doesn't mean much to you, fair enough. But for me, when I'm drinking tea regularly, I really dislike it when I have to constantly strain my neck when I'm uh, doing my uh, shots of tea. But because of the fact that this is taller and has this um, straighter edge, it does hold the aroma. So again, we've got the balance. This is the easy drinker for sure, but doesn't have as much aroma when you're drinking as this one. Very, very good. Okay, so those are the cups. I should also say that the porcelain that we use for this cup is thinner because we, you know, when it comes to the cup, what you want is the heat of the liquid to dissipate quickly so that it's very easy to drink. It's not going to um, scorch or scold you in any way while you're drinking, even if it's fresh brewed. Um, you can see that. Let me just um, put a torch under this. So you can see, I'll get a close up of it anyway, but when you see this one, um, put, a, put a torch under it and it's amazing when you see liquor in it as well. Wow, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. We'll get a close up of it so that you can take a look at this luminous green yellow liquor and you can see all of the activity, all of the, 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 um, the texture in the tea through this cup when you shine a torch through it. So slightly thinner porcelain, which is um, very, very good for cooling down your tea. Okay. So this is the Gaiwan tea set from Mayleaf. Now I promised you that I would show you some ways of pouring with the Gaiwan. I have done videos already about why I love brewing with Gaiwans and about how to brew with a Gaiwan. So if you have not checked out those videos, then that's probably the best place for you to start. I'll put links in the description below. But assuming that you already love Gaiwan Brewing or you're already into Gaiwan Brewing, then let me show you some ways to pour with it. So there are a few different ways we spoke about in the last video. Uh, one way that some people use is by holding the whole thing and pouring this way. I don't like this. I think it's very, very cumbersome. Not my favorite way of pouring. The classic way of pouring with the Gaiwan, let me put some water in here so make it real. The classic way of pouring with the Gaiwan is to take your index finger, point it at 45 degrees if you're right-handed to your left, if you're left-handed to your right, so 45 degrees there, I'm right-handed, so point it that way. Place the crease of your finger over the center of the guy one lid. So I'm pointing 45 degrees. Make sure you just tilt the lid a little bit so that, you're, so that that is where the opening is. So point, place, Put your um, middle finger and your thumb on the rim. Don't hold too tightly, there's no need. This now gives you the ability to pour. And then you can twist your wrist as you want. So you could pour backwards, you could pour frontwards, but always pour where you're pointing, right? If you pour not where you're pointing, so slightly more this way as opposed to this way, then you might hit your thumb or your middle finger 
with hot water. So always pour where you are pointing. So here, or I can pour here, or I can pour here, right? Whatever suits you. I always like to just do kind of 90 degrees so across me. That is the easiest for me. Um, and that is the most common way that people pour, right? Index finger, 45 degrees. That makes it easier to pick up. If you do your index finger here, it becomes a bit awkward. If you do your index finger here, it becomes a bit awkward. So just 45 degrees and then point where you pour. Very, very simple. Okay, so that's one way of brewing with the guy one, right? Let me show you another way of holding it. I'm gonna do one more brew here, if I've got enough water, just enough. Um, right, so another way of doing it is by sticking your finger in to the um, lid. So stick it into the lid, again, 45 degrees. So 45 degrees, stick it into your lid, and this time you're getting a much closer grip. You're, you're going much closer, you're bringing it, almost like holding it, you know? So in, and then you're wrapping not just the tips of your finger, but pretty much the first third of your finger and thumb. And again, pull where you're pointing, okay? So show you again quickly, give yourself a nice, Pouring angle, in goes the finger, grip in a quite nice uh, close way and then pour. This is a very stable way of pouring um, and this is, uh, this is more the farmer's way of pouring. Whenever you go to a farm, uh, they just grip it very, very close. It's like this. They're very, it's less of this kind of imperial, you know, delicate pinkies in the air kind of brewing or pouring. This is very, very simple. In goes the, the index finger, grip it like a bowl, and then pour it. And it, it's, it feels, when I pour this way, it feels much more farm style, farmer style. Okay, last way, last way of pouring. I'm going to uh, sacrifice a little bit of this brew. It's gonna be very, very strong. But I don't wanna waste your time brewing, uh, pouring more water or boiling more water. So this is advanced level. Right, advanced level guy one pouring. This is something that I picked up in China. Okay, so lid goes on. Okay, um, this time you are giving yourself um, again 45 degrees, maybe a bit flatter. Yeah, and instead of putting your finger flat, you're putting your finger sideways on, as if you're kind of karate chopping the guy one. So sideways on, like this, grip with the, the finger and the, the thumb, and then, oh, I forgot to pour the liquid in. Let me show you. So let's pour this liquor in. Oh, we go full here. So you can see what I mean. If you just pour this out, it will drain through this hole, which is really, really nice. So again, flat, finger and thumb. Pinky goes underneath, okay? And then when you pour, you release you release your finger and thumb, and it's kind of like a magic trick, right? You release your, your, your middle finger and your thumb, it's kind of like a magic trick. It looks kind of like the Spider-Man grip, let's call it the Spider-Man grip. Um, so that's another way of pouring, and I've seen that in China as well. When people get fancy, they, they kind of, they pour it, and it looks like, well, how are you doing that? It looks like you're not even holding it, and it's pouring. So that's advanced level guy one pouring for you. Um, and uh, you can practice that. Don't blame me if you burn yourself, okay? So that's our Maidif tea set. As, is, as I said, there is more porcelain on its way, but different, so it's not uh, the same thing. We've got 100 mil white guy ones coming for those of you who want to buy guy ones that are specifically for solo tasting and for very, very small amount of leaves or smaller amount of leaves to be used um, for um, horizontal tastings. And Hopefully we have tea boats on the way. But I hope that this has given you some insight into the kind of geekery that we get up to when we are designing our Mayleaf porcelain. That's it, tea heads. If you made it to the end of this video, then make sure you hit it with a thumbs up. Check out our YouTube playlist and let us know if there are any videos that you would like us to make. If you're ever in London, then come visit us in Camden to say hi and taste our wares. If you have any questions or comments, then please fire them over. Other than that, I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word.
because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.